Hi everyone, it's me, Spring, the Fiber Enthusiast, and welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to do a Tunisian stitch tutorial pattern. And the Tunisian stitch tutorial is going to be the chevron, Tunisian chevron. Now, I have a large piece here that I'm going to show you. I am working currently working on a project with this stitch pattern and I will show you this is what it looks like here so this is actually um, one two three four basically five repeats if you are adding the sides here because that equals up to one but um, this is five repeats your repeats are for your chain are 14 plus one for your chain. So go ahead and chain how many ever you would like in multiples of 14 and then add one. For this tutorial purpose, I am going to chain a total of 29 stitches. That is two repeats plus one. And I'm just using a scrap ball of yarn out of my scrap bin and a five millimeter Tunisian hook. And it's not really a Tunisian hook. It's actually a hook that I put some tubing on and created a Tunisian hook. So I'm going to place a slip knot on my hook and chain 29 chains. Okay, so once you have your 29 chains, you're going to turn it on its side and insert your hook into the bump on the back of the chain. So the stitch on the back, second bump from your hook. So that would be your second stitch because in Tunisian, your first one is already on your hook. So you're going to go into that second second stitch from your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. And you're gonna go and pull up a loop in every stitch to the end of your chain. You will know you've done it right if you have the same number of loops on your hook as you chained your original chain. So for my sample, there will be 29 loops on my hook when I reach the end. Go ahead and continue working down the chain and I'll meet up with you when we have reached the end. Okay, so once you have your 29 stitches, this first row, your first back pass, is going to be the same as always. You're gonna do a standard Tunisian back pass by yarning over and chaining one and you're gonna yarn over and go through two, yarn over, go through two, and continue that process until you've reached the end and you have one loop left on your hook. So the first two rows, forward pass and back pass, of the Tunisian chevron is going to be exactly the same as a Tunisian simple stitch forward pass and a Tunisian back pass. That is all there is to the first two rows. We need to get ourselves a base going. All right, once you've made it to the end and you have one loop left on your hook, we are now going to do our repeat. This is the following repeat. This first loop, again, always counts as one. We need to yarn over and insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So now what we've done is we've added a stitch. Now you're going to sim Tunisian simple stitch the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. Now we need to do a Tunisian simple stitch three together. 
So the next three vertical bars, you're going to insert your hook underneath of them, all three of them, yarn over and pull through all three of them. And what that does is that creates that bottom V to your chevron. Now you're gonna Tunisian simple stitch the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now we need to create the apex part of the chevron point that goes up. So now we're going to yarn over Tunisian simple stitch your next stitch and yarn over and Tunisian simple stitch your next stitch. So what that did was that added an extra stitch on either side of that point. Now you're going to Tunisian simple stitch the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. Now we're gonna create that bottom V again by Tunisian simple stitch three together. So once again, we're gonna be going under all three vertical bars, yarning over and pulling through all three of those. And now you're gonna Tunisian simple stitch the next four. So one, two, three, and four. And now we have two stitches left. You have one last vertical bar here, and then you have your two legs that you pick up at the very end. So you're gonna Tunisian simple stitch the next stitch, yarn over, and then turn that stitch on its side and pick up both of those legs of that stitch, just like that, and yarn over and pull up a loop. And now you're gonna create your back pass the same as always, yarn over and chain one, and then yarn over and go through two, yarn over, go through two, and continue working, yarn over, go through two, until you have reached the end and you have one loop left on your hook. Once you have reached the end, I will meet back up with you. Okay, so now we're gonna go through this forward pass once again together. And that's because I want to show you those yarn overs and how they appear when you're working the following forward passes. So that way you can pick them up. If you look at your stitches like this, it looks like all of these are your stitches and the only ones present. But your yarn over is right there and it's kind of tucked back. Now if we scoot over to the point of our next uh, V here, you can see the same thing. Here's a yarn over tucked away, and here's a yarn over almost tucked away there. So we will be working into those yarn overs. So here's our first stitch, yarn over, and we're gonna go into that previous yarn over and pick it up and pull up a loop, just like that. And then you're gonna work all the way through the next four Tunisian simple stitches. So Tunisian simple stitch the next four stitches. Now if you look, you have two stitches and then this hole that was created by doing that Tunisian simple stitch three together. 
we're going to do a Tunisian simple stitch three together. So we're gonna do these two stitches and the following stitch after that little hole there. So what that does is it kind of tightens things up a little bit. So you insert your hook into all three of those stitches there, yarn over, and we're gonna pull through all three of those stitches. And what that does is it kind of closes up that gap. There's still a little bit of a hole there, but not bad. And now you're going to work Tunisian simple stitch into the next one, two, three, four, five stitches. And that includes the yarn over from that previous row. So Tunisian simple stitch, one, two, three, four, and here's our yarn over from the row be before, and five. Now we're gonna do that same thing we did before where we're gonna yarn over Tunisian simple stitch one, yarn over Tunisian simple stitch one. So we're creating the point of the V. So yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch, yarn over, and Tunisian simple stitch that yarn over from the row below, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna work down again through this whole process. We're gonna Tunisian simple stitch into the next one, two, three, and four stitches. So Tunisian simple stitch, one, two, three, four. And now we're gonna Tunisian simple stitch three together. So one, two before that hole, and one after that hole. That's how you visually see it when you're working on it. Now we're going to Tunisian simple stitch into the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and then we have our yarn over down here, five. Yarn over and pick up those last two legs of the very last stitch, yarn over and pull through. And then you're gonna do a standard Tunisian back pass chain one, and then yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, until you have one loop left on your hook. Okay, so we're gonna go through this one more time. You can kind of start to see it now starting to form. We're gonna go through the process one more time and that way you can see it a little bit better and we'll move a little bit faster. So yarn over, Pick up that yarn over from the row below and Tunisian simple stitch it. And here's how I look at it. I Tunisian simple stitch to two before my hole. So here's the hole, one, two. So I'm gonna Tunisian simple stitch the next four stitches. Okay, now we're to two before the hole. We're gonna go through and Tunisian simple stitch three together, one, two, and three. So we're always catching the first one after the hole, two before and one after, and we're cinching them up together. Now, I also know that I'm going to Tunisian simple stitch all the way to this first yarn over. So, Tunisian simple stitch, one, two, three, four. Here's my yarn over, five. Now I'm gonna yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch, the center of that point, yarn over, and Tunisian simple stitch, the yarn over from the previous row. 
Now I'm just simply going to work through that process one more time. I'm going to Tunisian simple stitch to two before the hole down here at the bottom. Two, three, and four. And then I'm going to Tunisian simple stitch three together the two before the hole and the one after the hole. And then I'm going to Tunisian simple stitch to this yarn over here very at the very end. So here we go. One, two, three, four, and five. Now I'm going to yarn over, turn my work sideways here, and catch those two legs on the very end. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And then a standard Tunisian back pass. Chain one, yarn over, and go through two. And you're going to do that all the way to the end. Okay, so here we've done a few passes back and forth. And as you can see, the shape is starting to take place here. And you just continue to do those two rows, the same two rows, your forward pass, your back pass, exactly the same every time. And as I said, you kind of get a feel for as you're working, you know, when you come up to the hole here, two stitches before to one after those three go together and then you work up the side and you will start to see this very definite line here and that straight up line there should be a yarn over on either side of it and you'll know that that yarn over is the last stitch of that section before you yarn over and do a Tunisian simple stitch and then yarn over and Tunisian simple stitch the next stitch and work your way back down. Going back to my original project here. Okay, so as I was saying, you can see this definite ridge that you create um, by doing the three together and by doing your yarn overs on either side of this point. That's how you get the design that you get. So what am I doing with this? And how many did I do? What did I do? Well, this is entirely up to you. This is something that you can do and this is just an idea to show you. Um, <clears throat> what I'm doing actually is I chained 71 stitches. And what I'm going to do is continue to work on this until it is long enough to create an infinity scarf. Once it is long enough to create a nice long infinity scarf, all I'm going to do is simply sew this together. Because with Chevron, this is how it works up. Your points come together like this. And you just sew it up together. So it all matches up nice and neatly. And it continues on. And then what that'll do is allow me to create a scooty or just a very large infinity scarf. This is wide. I will tell you actually how, how wide it is at this present moment. It is 15 inches wide. Now I started with um, a Karen Big Cake, I think it was. And I'm just gonna keep going until I run out of yarn and hopefully it is long enough to make a scooty. That's why I have not had this finished yet because I still have quite a bit left over here um, to go to work through. I've got several more uh, colors to go through. 
So this is what I'm working on as far as using the Tunisian chevron stitch pattern. All right, everyone. I hope that you've enjoyed this yet again, another Tunisian uh, stitch tutorial. I hope you find a use for this stitch tutorial. It works up really nice fabric in a uh, blanket because it's nice and thick. Uh, there's not a lot of, you know, whole, big gaping holes or anything. This is the back side of it. And then that's the front. That's it. All right, everyone. Let me know down in the comments section. What do you think of this stitch? And have you done it before? What did you use it for if you did? And if you haven't, would you make something with the Tunisian chevron stitch? Be blessed, be a blessing, and until next time, bye for now, everyone.